before we start to actually get value from this video and 10x your productivity like I did you're gonna look at this video as a book so you're basically gonna understand one of these points or even a part of them then take action on them one by one because I know for a fact that you're gonna feel overwhelmed hearing all these productivity Aww. tips then end up watching Mr. Beast so use the progressive overload concept that you've already using in the gym which is basically by adding weight slowly to the bar then progressing for a heavier weight so do the same thing and implement these points one by one and once you're comfortable with one of them go to the second one and first your mental health probably watch a lot of videos about procrastination that basically told you oh just do the first five minutes bro and you could do the work that shitty advice might only work to cure the resistance that i will talk about later on but if you got fucked up mental health problem that shitty advice is not gonna help you you will still feel depressed anxious while doing your work and when you start procrastinating you know for a fact that you can't do work right now march 2022 in some random school holidays i was feeling down in life i would wake up and play genshin impact first thing in the morning for two hours then go fab two times to some fucking life port then go binge watch bucky and then have a shitty ass workout in the evening because of my low ass testosterone after that i might work on my anime channel for like 30 minutes while watching speed videos in between then i'll start watching hours of my time or continue you watching Bucky and I felt depressed, I felt weak as shit because I went through some dopamine detoxes before that was actually doing the work I was making progress on my anime channel and I don't know if you're like me but if I'm not making progress towards my goals I'm fucking feeling empty and purposeless which made me get more mental health problems but one day when I was procrastinating on my work scrolling through freaking YouTube I clicked on one of Hamza's videos it was some random ass one I'm still not sure why I even clicked on it. And I started binge watching him and not gonna lie, he motivated me to start doing my work again so I can become a high value man and get bitches. But I didn't feel mentally healthy doing the work. I felt anxious and depressed. I achieved almost nothing and I got more mental health problems because I realized how much fucking time I wasted. So I kept watching him and finally got convinced to start doing the habits he was telling me which would basically help cure my mental health problems and got convinced to stop watching porn and literally in a few days my mental health went like this I stopped feeling empty and depressed and doing the work started feeling easy again I was actually getting shit done and I finally uploaded that video that I procrastinated on for like 3 months and after that I cured all the rest of my addictions which I used to procrastinate on my work and after that my productivity went like this and that's why you gotta be mentally healthy to do the work so what are the habits that improves our mental health meditation gratitude exercise social connections and time in nature and maybe journaling and reading if you start doing these habits first thing in the morning your mental health will go like this you will feel motivated to doing your work you will at least stop abusing those bad habits and start doing them in somewhat of a healthy way so watch this video where i show you how to start doing those habits but if you keep doing those bad habits that will basically spike your dopamine you're gonna 10x these chances that you're gonna relapse because once your mental health gets fucked for some bullshitty reason you're gonna find yourself abusing those bad habits and procrastinating on your work and besides that point you will not enjoy your work it's like eating a ton of broccoli and then go eat a spoon of chocolate you will feel that you're doing hard work and using discipline so you can eat that broccoli so why not stop eating the chocolate so you can prevent yourself from binge eating chocolate and your broccoli will start tasting better so watch this video where i show you how and why you should stop doing those bad habits forever but if you neglect the second point i'm telling you it doesn't matter if you're on self-improvement or got a good ass mental health you will still feel depressed so let's get to that 
second point having a purpose and meaning in the work you're doing purpose is the why is the reason that you do your work for and no it's not fucking money it goes more deeper than that it's why you're serving people anyways having a purpose and meaning of work will 10x your productivity by itself if you're not feeling proud of your work you can't wait to share to your friends and family and she millions of people on earth you're not gonna be as productive as you could be and the work will just feel like work you probably get depressed doing it i've learned this the hard way when i wanted to start a youtube channel and make money from it i've heard that advice that you're hearing everywhere oh just do what you love bro so i basically start experimenting with uploading fucking anime tier lists and gaming videos but i didn't really enjoy them i didn't get for fulfillment from uploading them obviously they were shit but it wasn't the only reason it didn't feel like something i wanted to do i kept experimenting and finally made an anime memes video which i enjoyed fucking making shit didn't feel like work i finished that shit in two days even though i was still new to editing i've literally dedicated every minute to making it and didn't even procrastinate on it even though i was fapping and playing video games and watching anime and doing all that bullshit i've literally sacrificed all those comforts towards doing my work anyways after i completed that video i started sharing it with my friends i literally even shared it to random people on discord and everyone was praising it and laughing at it and it was the moment of this is the thing I'm gonna keep doing. One year passed and I started growing my anime channel. I obviously had some procrastinations here and there but I was still feeling proud of making those videos. They were still giving me fulfillment but after I got in self improvement and gone through that story that I told you in the first point which 10 x my productivity by itself and got that hope of making a YouTube channel again. So I started taking my anime channel seriously again. I started setting goals on it made the purpose for that channel but after i kept progressing my self-improvement journey kept watching podcasts and reading books i've changed my mind about anime and i literally stopped doing all those shitty habits i was doing which was basically what i was making those memes about and i've only watched anime to freaking make anime memes at some point i was watching anime at 8x speed so i can get a meme or two i didn't feel offending doing that shit not a fucking fat ass weeb who faps to fucking hentai anymore i'm that motherfucker who tells you to wake up at 5 a.m and do cold showers so i changed as a person i didn't find that shit fulfilling as i used to I even got religious, so I felt ashamed to upload some cringy useless anime memes that will probably fuck up your porn addiction and your YouTube addiction. And I've literally started changing the content I was doing. I've started adding some gym memes and tried to make fucking anime memes more valuable. But deep inside, I knew for a fact that I'm not doing something meaningful or helping people. So I felt super demotivated to make those videos. I kept procrastinating on them every time i just sit and start thinking about my purpose my mission my meaning of work and especially when i wanted to upload those videos i remember one day i've sat on my desk to do the final touches for this video literally when i got to click on render and finish that video i got a mental breakdown i started busting into crying i didn't know why at that time but i just I couldn't upload that shit. I kept crying and punching the fucking pillows and literally had to go for hours of walks just to recover my mental health from all that anxiety. And this happened three times throughout all summer, which fucked up my productivity. And I kept coping with it, listening to Hamza advice, oh, do the work when you don't feel like it, which is kind of a good advice, but not for me at that time. I was already super disciplined to do the work, but discipline wasn't really the problem. I obviously wanted to achieve those goals that I've set it for that channel so i kept coping with it all summer even if i was depressed doing my work until i had a conversation with one of my bros where i kind of coached him self-improvement and after that conversation i felt a sense of fulfillment it was that moment that i've experienced when i made my first anime memes video this is the thing moment again i didn't instantly go back and make a fucking self-improvement channel i think two days later 12 a.m 
after I've hit the gym, probably smashed the leg day or some bullshit. And I was procrastinating on my work. And I had like five projects not finished at that time. And I went and said, fuck this shit. Fuck anime memes. Fuck watching anime. Fuck Japanese cartoons. And after that, I started working on my self-improvement channel. And not gonna lie, those were some hard ass times. I had to figure out all my framework of making these videos from scratch. But... I didn't procrastinate on that. I felt 10x happier doing it. I literally felt fulfilled even if I spent 3 hours stuck while scripting a video because I knew it laid with my purpose in life. The work didn't feel like work. I don't even have burnouts anymore. I wake up super motivated to do that shit. I can't wait to upload this fucking video and deep throat you with fucking value. This is probably an extreme example of why you should do something fulfilling and work towards something purposeful. So how could you discover your purpose in the first place? I read this book called The Way of the Superior Man who just told you to just look at your woe and challenge yourself. But I don't think it's just that. I've came up with this purpose formula. Set goals plus take action on them plus reflection equals to discovering your purpose. And since you're watching a video about productivity, you should 100% have already set it some goals and worked on them. Watch that video if you haven't. Don't worry, you still have hope. But you missed the reflection part, which is done by journaling. So you're gonna take a journal and ask these three questions. Who do I want to help with my work? How can I help them? And why do I want to help them with my work? Your purpose is your why. For example, I want to help all young men that probably watch is anime, perhaps to porn, and scrolls through YouTube shorts, but they still want to improve their selves. And how? By sharing the self-improvement message on social media and clickbait them to self-improvement. And why? Because I want them to live the self-improvement life. Because I know how dick sucking it is. I know how shit it feels to procrastinate by fapping and watching porn. I know how purposeless and empty it feels. If I could get all young men on self-improvement, the world would go like this. We'll cure all our fucking problems. Because change starts from us. Anyways, you don't have to exactly know your purpose so you can 10x your productivity. Just the fact that you're proud of your work and can't wait to show it to your family, your friends, and millions of people on earth and shit gives you fulfillment and doesn't even feel like work, you're doing something purposeful. That's what's gonna make you more productive. So keep journaling and you'll probably discover your purpose and even get more motivated motivation to do your work but if you're running an anime channel like me or a gaming channel or any shit that you don't feel proud of it doesn't get you fulfillment it didn't feel authentic it's like you're just doing it to be a youtuber yeah the video quality might be shit but you didn't enjoy making that shit and you probably procrastinated on it and even had depressions while working on it if you're experiencing that you got some journaling to do and don't be discouraged to stop when you have to. My story should have been the best example of why you should stop not working on your purpose. And the third thing that 10x my productivity is doing deep work. If you could read this book called Deep Work by Cal Newport, it's totally fucking worth it. This is like the master of productivity. I'm just gonna give you some tips from my experience. First, let's explain deep work and shallow work. Deep work is the 100% focused work like talking to this camera and you could probably do an hour of it and the shallow work is the easy distracted work like making these cringy edits and adding video chapters to my video or making a thumbnail so first you gotta identify the tasks you're doing but you probably noticed that the depth varies a lot sometimes editing is deep work for me when I try to arrange these clips so rate your tasks using this depth scale starting from zero which is the shallowest work like fucking searching for trends or adding video chapters to 10 which is the deepest work like recording and maybe writing a book or some bullshit and basically the tasks that's five and more are probably gonna be deep work if tasks that are five and less are gonna be shallow work and to do deep work you need willpower so you're gonna prioritize all your deep work tasks in the morning and keep your shallow tasks in the evening 
you could do them at the same time so you can literally program your mind to go into deep work mode state in a specific time for me editing takes a shit ton of my time so i don't want to record these videos or script them in advance just because oh it's my deep work hours bro and end up slowing my channel progress now let me show you how to prepare for your deep work and your shallow work first deep work Get rid of any distractions around you. Keep your phone out of the room and lock on the door. If your work doesn't need internet, cut that shit out. Literally, if your phone gets a notification, your deep work state is fucked. Get rid of food and fucking cigarettes. Who the fuck eats while working? Those productivity motherfuckers will annoy me. They'll have freaking chocolate next to them and say, Oh, how I stay productive, bro. Shut up. And second, you gotta try to prevent the distractions that you couldn't control. If your mom enters your room and starts shouting, or your dad starts knocking on your door, try to prevent that shit from happening again. And three, make a fucking jail environment. Watch this episode of Andrew Huberman podcast where he shows you how to optimize your workspace for maximum productivity. I'ma give you the shit I'm using. I basically got fucking books on my monitor so I could be higher. Cause literally if you're looking downwards like this you're gonna feel sleepier and you're not gonna be able to do deep work the more you look up the more you're gonna be aware some people literally can't close their eyes if they're looking up so try to get your monitor up so you can even avoid having forward neck posture and i turn these strong ass lights above me which will basically enter fucking light to the like lower part of your freaking eyes and makes you more aware so i literally close my balcony and the freaking thing that gets rid of the light and i turn these motherfuckers and it's like a fucking cave it doesn't matter if it's raining or snowing or it's the fucking end of the world i'm doing deep work means i'm doing fucking deep work which i found really helpful because i kept looking at my balcony and saying oh the weather is too great every minute i get stuck while scripting these videos and fourth keep a timer and set a goal let me explain this parkinson's law the task will expand to the time that you've dedicated to it so before you start your deep work keep a timer i basically have an app on my pc which basically shows me fucking timer on my screen and set a goal for the end result of that deep work session and it's kind of like a rep goal in the gym it will make you push harder get even to a deeper state of work but don't set a five hour timer and think that you could script for three hours like i did so you're gonna apply the progressive overload concept that you use in the gym to your deep work so when you do deep work stop when you get that feeling of being brain fucked even if it's 40 minutes or 30 minutes and then progress your way up and don't be discouraged a month into this shit and i can't go more than an hour and a half of recording because of my fucked up attention spam for making these fucking edits the fifth thing is to make sure to rest between your deep work blocks because as i said you're pushing to the limits of your brain you literally feel brain fucked after doing it so try to get at least a 30 minute rest between your deep work blocks maybe by hitting the gym or eating or doing any of that bullshit so you can reset your willpower and go for another deep work block and for the shallow tasks also keep that cave environment and try to prevent and get rid of all those distractions but the problem with shallow tasks it doesn't consume your mental power it more consumes your energy you won't feel brain fucked after editing or writing a description but after a while you'll feel that burnout from sitting and doing the same thing over and over again so when i do shallow tasks i don't push to my limits because my efficiency will go down i'll start editing slower and won't make good decisions that will keep doing it just to wait for the timer to end so i limit my editing blocks which is mostly the shallow work i do from an hour to an hour 45 if i'm really feeling energized but you probably go to school or have some other responsibilities and can't do your deep work in the morning so let's get to the fourth point start waking up as early as possible summer holidays ended and i got back to school now i'm studying from 8 a.m to 6 p.m i basically was still making these self-improvement videos but i didn't have time for them i was waking up at 5 30 and maybe go for an hour of work but it wasn't even deep work because my mom and dad were shouting and knocking at the door telling me to get ready for school and when i got back to school to do more work i couldn't focus my attention spam was already fucked up from fucking maths and physics 
physics. I literally have to eat a ton of carbs just to recover my mental powers so I can start editing. And even when I did the work, I felt sleepy and de-energized and lazy. And of course I will, because my willpower got fucked up from school. They took my most productive hours in the morning. And I literally had to get my workout in the lunch break, so I couldn't even rest. So I achieved nothing, which was kinda depressing for me. I was sitting on my school table and I started thinking and said, this is a fucking waste of time. I could be changing lives right now. I can't cope with this. I wanna fucking leave school. I literally started crying. I had that mental breakdown. But after a while, I had the idea to start waking up at 4am so I can get two work blocks before going to school. So I basically shifted my sleep and started sleeping at 7.30 so I can wake up at 3.50 and try to convince my parents to stop knocking on my door and entering the room in the morning. And I finally got more shit done and my mental health went like this. I can at least cope with school and use it as an opportunity to level up my shitty social skills. So if you're like me and got a 9 to 5 job or go to university or high school, you have to make that shift because as I said, you need willpower to do your deep work or even your shallow work and if you're gonna push it to the night or the evening, you're not gonna be able to do deep work, you'll probably feel sleepy and lazy. So you're gonna make that shift like I did, literally wake up as early as possible and sleep as early as possible so you can get your work in the first hours of the morning, get into deep work state. Yeah it will suck dick and you will feel that your body can't function anymore but it's totally worth it think in decades think how much more productive you will be and a quick tip try to do it at your rest day because you will literally feel that your body will not function and is not ready for workouts but you're still gonna get eight hours of sleep because that shit is essential for your mental work talking about sleep let's get to the fifth point optimizing your sleep if you haven't optimized your sleep and you're watching productivity videos, the fuck are you doing? Sleep will 10x every pillar of your life, your productivity, your health, your relationships, your social skills, your workouts, literally everything. If I'm lacking an hour or even half an hour of sleep, I can't function like a normal human being. My productivity will go like this, I'll probably get 15 minutes of deep work and then go take a nap. I'll start bitching my workouts, I'll keep overthinking all the day about some negative bullshit and can't be present and happy. My mental health will go like this. Cause as I said, sleep will 10x all parts of your life. I'm gonna tell you what I'm basically doing to optimize my sleep and some tips from this episode of Under Huberman podcast where he talks about optimizing your sleep. First, see sunlight first thing in the morning. Literally what you do in the morning matters more than what you do in the night when it comes to optimizing your sleep. As I said, I wake up around 4 and 5 a.m. There is no sun in winter at that time. So basically what I do is I turn these strong ass artificial lights first thing in the morning which will basically spike this hormone called cortisol which will spike then go down throughout the day which will make you more aware and feel less anxious and depressed later on the day. Second, I shower. I don't really do cold showers right now because it's fucking winter. I just shower, warm, hot, I don't give a fuck because you're still getting that cold exposure when you're trying to wear your clothes after you got out of the shower. So you're still gonna get that spike of dopamine which should basically make you more aware and focused. And that shower will help heat up your body so your temperature goes like this throughout the day and basically make you sleep better. He talks about it in the episode. I don't want to fucking talk about science. And the third thing is to limit your caffeine at 10 a.m. I'll talk about coffee later on on those points. But basically coffee has an effect of 12 hours on your sleep. So you prefer be want to limit your coffee intake 12 hours before your bedtime so you don't ruin the deep sleep you will get. And fourth, consistency. Your sleep gotta be consistent because your body can't function well if you're gonna keep changing your sleep hours day to day. If I change my sleep time even by 30 minutes, I'll feel shit for the next day. My stomach will start to hurt and my body could not function and I'm not ready for my workouts. So try to keep your bedtime consistent. Sleep at the same time and wake up at the same time every day. 
and fifth eat two and a half hours before you sleep now some people like to be full and some people like to be empty when they go to bed i basically eat a ton of carbs in the night which will help me feel sleepier so i can get a better sleep and i try to reduce my fiber intake so i don't have to take a shit in the night and six take a 20 minute nap if you're lacking sleep because that nap will make you sleep better in the actual sleep and seventh create a cave environment let's see turn off all the lights and make it pitch black i know that some of you struggled with some sleep traumas and you probably have to keep the bed table open or have any noise next to you so you can sleep i've struggled with that throughout all my childhood but i finally cured it which is basically by applying the progressive overload concept even here so i basically started doing that shit progressively one night i turned off my bed table and like two months later after i got used to sleeping in pitch dark I stopped watching podcasts or YouTube videos before I sleep and now I just get to bed to sleep and I'm not afraid of fucking demons or any bullshit. And eighth, download the sleep cycle app which will help you track your sleep and see the estimation of the actual sleep you got so you can improve it later on. And after downloading this app, I realize how much fucking times I go pee in the night which ruined my fucking sleep. That gets us to the ninth point, start doing hip thrusts. Ignore the fact that it's a good ass exercise for your glutes and your hamstrings but it's basically a form of ketek exercises which would basically help you control your thing down there when you want to pee after i started doing them for a while obviously my glutes got stronger but i progressed from being five times in a night to like one or two times in a night if i really drink shit ton of water and then turn on airplane mode on your phone so you can stop vibrating and getting you notifications every 10 minutes you get to put a blue light filter at least two hours before you sleep and the sixth point is never lose momentum you probably felt after finishing a project or getting stuck in some part of it and felt demotivated to start a new project or go fix that old project but you obviously did because you're disciplined enough and you should be doing the work even if you don't feel like it like Hamza says but why did you experience that feeling of resistance in the first place this book called do the work talks about that he explains it like that final boss dragon that you need to beat his ass up so he can fuck the princess and you have to fight that motherfucker every single time you get to do your work so to avoid losing to him and start procrastinating and she step on him every time you get to work you gotta never lose momentum momentum makes everything way easier and fun editing scripting recording this shit doesn't feel like work it's like playing fortnite when i was a child it takes zero willpower from me to get up from my bed and start working and even with my gym i don't even rest and it became a habit for me i literally see the clock 9 a.m i go wear my gym clothes and hit the gym i even forgot that my monthly subscription ended when i got there because i didn't think about it so how i never lose momentum first i do this shit every single day i don't take days off or fucking weekends off even when i got school i never lose momentum i still wake up at 4 a.m to get more work done and do it first thing in the morning before any think but when i was an anime youtuber i would literally stop doing the work for like months and weeks and then get depressed because i'm procrastinating because that resistance grew up a lot it became like a level 500 boss the more that you keep him recover by not doing the work he will start leveling up and leveling up that's why you start procrastinating and the second way to never lose the momentum is to identify the parts that you kind of feel the most resistance in and try to prevent them from happening i feel a huge resistance after i finished a whole video and uploaded it and i feel a little demotivation to start the new one which does affect my productivity so what i basically do the day that i'm gonna upload that video it only got shallow parts of the editing left i will script a video and record it if i can and maybe get it in the editing program before i upload that video because those are like the two tasks that gives me the most resistance after uploading and i basically have some parts of my editing workflow i basically get the first render of this video and then try to adjust and fix the edit i'm doing not gonna lie when i click on that render button and i haven't finished the video yet i feel a sense of resistance because i'm used to click that render button only when i'm fully ready to upload which made me feel that i've already achieved that goal
And third, to never lose momentum, do one project at a time. As I said, I might record a new video before I upload the last one, but at that point, I've already done the deep work needed for that project. I just need to adjust a little the edits. It doesn't really need my full attention, but I'm not gonna be scripting and recording and editing two videos at a time. I kept experiencing with this when I was a fucking anime YouTuber, and it just didn't work. Because when you do one project at a time, you will be sleeping and thinking about that project, working out, and your subconscious mind is trying to figure out, make that project better, or even find solutions for the things that you're stuck at. So you will basically use the extra 90% of your whole brain power, which will help you get that shit 10 times faster. It's like that one math problem you kept obsessing about all night, and then woke up and figure out the solution for it. And the seventh point is being essential and effective. This book called Essentialist is really helpful especially as you grow more in whatever work you're doing and start getting more opportunities. He basically shows you these two graphs and most people are like the first graph. They try to make progress in a lot of different things and end up not making progress in any one of them. But the essentialist picks one thing and make a huge progress on it. And this is why I'm not gonna be fucking making TikToks or Instagram reels or even YouTube shorts until these long videos goes viral and I have more more time to do YouTube shorts and all that bullshit. Even Mr. Beast said it. He focused on growing the other businesses, but it caused him to neglect his channel, which is the main thing running all those businesses. So first, you're gonna identify the essential things you do. For example, if you're hitting the gym and running at the same time, but want to start a YouTube channel and maybe improve your social life, you can't be hitting the gym and running for four hours every day. You will not make progress on any one of those pillars so you will have to either cut the gym or the running so identify the essential things in these three parts of life relationships and social life business and money and health and looks and after you identifying those essential things you're gonna apply the 80 20 rule to every one of them which is basically the 20 percent of work you do that gives you the 80 percent of the results and this rule could scale up to one percent and 99 percent grab a journal right now and ask this question every week what is the 20 percent of people and social life that's given me 80 percent of the help and love and improves my mental health the most what is the 20 percent of work I do in my business that gives me 80% of the results or even the 20% of clients that gives you 80% of the income. What is the 20% of the exercise I'm doing that's giving me 80% of the results? What is the 20% of foods that I'm eating that's giving me 80% of my caloric intake and my protein intake? And this is something I'm still struggling with. With first, my YouTube channel. I'm basically making this cringy hyper edit videos which takes up a shit ton of my time I'm still not sure if they are really essential to grow my channel and get a better engagement rate don't get me wrong I'm still being essentialist and applying the 28 to rule even in my editing go look back to any of my videos I've probably used the same images transitions graphs footage thousands of times even though I can make new ones or even make fucking animations for my intros but that's gonna slow me down, so fuck that. And same thing with my gym progress. I see those essentialist workouts. Ah, oh, 45 minutes, bro. Meanwhile, I'm doing an hour and a half workouts and training my body twice a week with no rest. I'm still experimenting and figuring out how much sets do I need. I basically do one or two hard sets per exercise. But sometimes, even though I said I'm gonna do one hard set, I still feel that the muscle is not fucked up yet. And I experienced this when I tried to reduce my heart sets training legs and the moment I leave the gym I don't feel that I've trained legs I feel that I didn't push hard enough that's why I'm gonna go for another heart set on my final exercise so I don't keep regretting not having sore legs in the next day because I know for a fact my legs aren't growing if they are not sore but for my diet I'm quite essentialist I eat the same foods every single day for years now which is basically lentils pizza wraps and shawarma wraps and maybe some foods with my family so don't make my dumbass mistake and keep searching for the best high protein pancake recipes then wasting two hours of willpower in the kitchen to cook them just pick the essentialist shit that will give you the calorie intake you need and the most protein
protein you need that you could be consistent with and just eat whenever you want and finally from the social side i need to be less essential my friend group didn't change since elementary school that's how fucked up my social skills are and if you want to be making friends with people on self improve go join our discord server where i get all motherfuckers who swung to be like bucky in that server and the eighth thing that 10x my productivity is failing and learning you can't expect to be a hundred percent productive at doing something if you haven't mastered it yet you have to go through that period of practice you have to keep failing and learning failing and learning failing and learning for days months and even years and when you master that shit then you can be more productive then you're gonna get the same results that took years to get and probably weeks i wanted to upload my first video about anime binge watch depression bro and i set it the goal to upload that shit in three days because i kind of had that stroked ego from making anime memes oh i will get this video done in a week and i will blow up bro and you know how it took me almost two fucking months in one video and i was working every day on it it was summer holidays i literally dedicated every single minute towards making that video i wasn't fapping or procrastinating or any shit i was doing almost all the points that i mentioned i literally just hit the gym and worked on that video for two months and i literally kept delaying that goal day by day day by day day by fucking day and of course it will take me two months because i had to figure out all this shit from scratch i had to figure out what type of videos i'm making i thought i would be making freaking self-improvement anime edits look what i'm doing now i had to figure out how to script and record and edit these fucking videos i didn't know how long should i script for i didn't know how long should i record for i didn't know the best lighting and what part of my room would be the best for recording i didn't know the best camera app or some bullshit and i had to learn how to edit these fucking graphs that i'm using right now i had to figure out all that framework from scratch and it's totally fucking different from making anime memes if you're a youtuber like me and you're making fucking stream highlights or fortnite memes scripting and recording videos is 10 times harder than fucking making fortnite memes but when i got my framework done and i got my shit together shit is easy now i know exactly what i'm doing every time i make a new video if i'm in control of my time it takes me one week to get two hyper edited 10 minute videos so don't be discouraged if you find yourself not achieving anything if you're still new to editing or making youtube videos because success is exponential even in learning skills and making youtube videos you're gonna go from this to this when you get your shit together i will make a video where i share my framework with you so i can give you what i learned from two months of suffering a ninth diet and carbs if you're hitting the gym probably are eating a shit ton of oats for breakfast but don't you feel sleepy after eating it and felt demotivated to do your work or even hit the gym if you're experiencing that after eating oats or any type of high carb foods i got some bad news for you you have to stop eating oats or any carbs in the morning let me explain when i started working on this channel i was eating first thing in the morning i'll actually jump out of my bed at 6 a.m just so i can have my oats for breakfast but the moment i finish eating that shit i feel sleepy and lazy as fuck i literally started meditating and visualizing after it so i can be more aware because i thought i was lacking sleep from the night before but shit didn't work it made me feel even lazier and sleepier and the problem is i was doing fucking deep work after that shit and shit felt hard as fuck couldn't keep my attention on the camera or on my monitor i literally had to drive back my attention hundreds of times so i started drinking coffee but i still felt sleepy it didn't cure that laziness and i experienced this even in lunch i thought it was because that afternoon crash that we have and said i need to take a nap and maybe drink a coffee but turned out not the case when I watched Hamza's video about trying this experiment and stop eating carbs and this episode of Rander Huberman about optimizing focus, I learned that if you eat too much carbs or get super stuffed by eating too much food, you're gonna feel sleepy and you're not gonna be able to do your mental work. So I started optimizing my diet so I can be more aware and productive throughout the day and I came up with these conclusions. So I'm gonna show you my full day of eating. First, I stopped eating carbs in my breakfast 
breakfast and delayed it to two hours and a half to three hours in the morning because even if I don't eat carbs but eat first thing in the morning I'm gonna feel sleepy so I basically fast that part of the morning which helps keep me aware like I am right now and then go make a four egg omelet with some cheese and peanuts and then I will have my workout around four hours after waking up that will basically eat an apple or banana or even dates literally minutes before I step into the gym because I found that it gets digested really fucking fast and I mean really fucking fast if I eat carbs 20 minutes before I get to the gym I'll not feel that pump even worse I'll feel sleepier and lazier to start my workout and have to go fucking warm up with the bike so literally in the gym vestor I'm eating fucking bananas and apples and then go do my workout don't say I'm getting sick pumps since I've started doing that shit or even if I'm feeling a testosterone crush on my leg day or some bullshit I'll go eat some carbs I'll maybe have half a banana left in my bag and I'll go take a bite from it I will instantly feel the glycogen entering my blood and my muscles so that was a huge thing for me so I can balance my gym progress and this YouTube progress just eat your carbs as a pre-workout and after my workout I will basically have lunch now I still feel sleepy in lunch if I eat too much carbs but it doesn't have the same effect as it does in my breakfast and I've already worked out so if I'm gonna eat carbs it's gonna replenish the glycogen in my muscles that's why it wouldn't have the same effect as if in the morning so if you're having your workout first thing in the morning you can still have some carbs in your breakfast if you want but don't go too heavy and eat two bowls of oatmeal with two spoons of honey like I was doing and for the evening I have somewhat of a snack now if I've done some deep work after my lunch I basically feel brain fucked and can't focus I found that eating carbs after doing deep work and feeling brain fucked really helps with energizing me for the next work session so in that snack I might eat a couple of fruits and I feel that shit I feel the carbs going into my brain and energizing him so I made the rule if you don't deserve to eat carbs don't eat carbs that gets us to the dinner in dinner I eat as much as I want from carbs and eat a lot of filling proteins so I basically eat a shit ton of rice or chicken wraps or lentil soup I literally eat anything because you somewhat already want to get sleepy after your dinner and I mostly don't do that much of a work after my dinner I might edit or make thumbnails or have a conversation with my bros I'm not gonna be fucking recording these videos but if you do some deep work in the night try to limit your carbs in the dinner maybe have a soup with some protein now that's my full day of eating that I experimented with let's just do a quick recap don't eat carbs in the morning unless it's your pre-workout eat carbs minutes before you enter the gym and in lunch try to reduce your carb intake and eat all the shit you want in dinner unless you're not doing deep work and 10 is setting goals I made a video about why and how should you be setting goals I'll link it here and I basically talked about the winning feeling the identity shift the clarity and confidence you will have from setting some big ass goals for 10 years from now and those points will help you be more productive but the most important one for me at least was setting some daily monthly and weekly milestones stones it's like going to the gym you're not gonna feel motivated while doing squats if you think about your weight goal you're gonna be motivated if you set a rep goal so i couldn't go in a night and started procrastinating on my work oh i'm feeling sleepy bro shut up because i've already set that goal that i don't want to regret not achieving it if i could obviously what i basically do right now is first set goals for the month then go make some weekly goals mostly about how much videos i want to make and every night i make a day highlight for the next day which is basically the one thing that will give me the most fulfillment and get me closer towards achieving those bigger goals which i stole from some productivity book i'll probably show it there and i don't stop there even before i do my deep work which i mentioned in the deep work point i still set goals for that deep work session so i can push harder and get more shit done so always set some small milestones and don't be discouraged if you fail them because you probably underestimate the time that it will take to do your work and don't forget that success is exponential now let's get to this bonus tip coffee you could watch this episode of andrew huberman podcast about the use of caffeine i 
personally don't drink coffee that much so I can have the maximum effect of caffeine which basically give you that tunnel vision so you can focus more so I basically have it in these three situations before my leg day because I hit those fucking hard and before I'm recording these videos because I honestly don't record that often because as I said fucking editing takes up most of my fucking time and I will only drink it if I'm not feeling energized for that work session and the third situation if I'm really lacking sleep or feeling sick or some other bullshit but the only rule that you should respect that I mentioned in the optimizing sleep point never have caffeine before 10 hours of your bedtime you literally ruin your sleep so keep your caffeine intake mostly before 10 a.m have it one hour to two hours before waking so you can avoid having an energy crush later on if you want me to personally help you to boost your productivity or even help you in your self-improvement journey good news for you i've started self-improvement coaching so i'll link the fiverr link in the description and join our discord server so you can ask me some questions if you want and as always there is no time when you're ready